All right, welcome back to The Greater You. We've got some great topics for you, for us today to discuss. We're talking about finding focus. This is a really important topic, as all of our topics are. We really don't tend to post about things that are trivial, do we? <clears throat> but that's because the purpose of our posting is to give you a shot of positivity every day. We want you to have access to tools and ideas that will help improve your lives. That is our whole mission at The Greater You. Even the name of our company is all about the greater you, right? So today we're talking about finding focus. Let's discuss this today. we got five components to this to think about. We do have very specifically developed processes that we take people through when they're working to build focus in their lives that any of our coaches can take you through. It's a tried and true method that we put together on, on the back of 20 plus years of, of work to try and develop the best process possible to help you to be able to find and create focus in your life. So the focus we're talking about today isn't necessarily just the mental fortitude or capacity to focus on a topic for any given time, although this process will definitely help you eliminate distractions so that that type of focus can also be cultivated. What we're talking about is your top focuses or foci, if you wanna use the a different form of that word, the focuses that you have in your life that you spend your time on. So let's think about this for a minute. First thing we want you to do, we, we like, we're like we all about the call to action, right? So pull out your pen and paper and let's get to work. What we want you to do is list out your top 10 things that you wanna accomplish in your life. Right from the hip, don't, don't overthink this. I want you to have an organic answer here that just kind of comes from within you. So what are your top 10 things you'd like to accomplish? Map those out. That could be anything. If there wasn't any rules around that, what are the top 10 things you'd like to accomplish in your life? So pause this video, take a minute, map out your top 10 things, and then come back. All right, so next step, list out your top four values and principles that you live by. So these are two different lists. That first list is what do you want? And the second list is what drives you? What are the values? What are the principles? What are the concepts? that drive you as a person. List out your top core. You could do five, 10, however many of these as you want, but it's very important to look at that and be able to have, here's what I wanna do and here's what's important to me. When you look at your core values and your principles, it helps you understand what's most important to you, right? Integrity, honesty, follow through, fun, adventure, family, friends. What are the things that make your list? So now the third step in helping you with this little finding focus exercise is to get accountable. This is really important. And between each of these steps, feel free to pause the video, take a minute, jot some ideas down, and then let us know in your comments what your experience has been as you did this exercise. All right, so this third one is getting accountable. So what we need to do is list out the top five things that you're actually spending your time on. So this is a really important thing. You're almost creating like a, a triangle here. On one part of the triangle, one point of the triangle is the top 10 things you want to accomplish. And then the other point of the triangle is your core values that drive you. And then the other point of the triangle is what are you actually doing? So if your top 10 list of things I want to do is write a book. I really want to write a book. And then there's a core value that backs it up. And that core value is something like sharing knowledge. Okay, those are, now your value is in alignment with your wants, but then you look at your, what are you actually spending your time on? And there's nothing on that list about writing a book. You're like spending time just scrolling Instagram. You're spending time working really hard at your day job, but maybe your day job doesn't give you time or uh, access to be able to write. Um, you're spending time doing all these other things, watching Netflix, watching YouTube, hi, <laughs> whatever it is you're doing. Although I'm here to help you write a book, right? Um, what are you actually spending your time on? That accountability step, step three, in this finding focus exercise is really important because it gives you a chance to evaluate what I want, what's important to me, and what am I actually doing? Clearly, if there's a lot of time wasting going on in your life, where you're spending a lot of time on things that don't meet your want list and are not in alignment with your values, it's time to do step four, which is evaluate these things and start working to get alignment between your core principles you live by, the things you actually want, and what you're actually spending your time on. So that triangle can be cleaned up 
and, and get all three points of the triangle in alignment. There might be a visual I need to build with this triangle idea. I just came up with it while we're talking here. Uh, this is how it works, people. We create as we go and as we teach and learn, we keep growing and we keep coming up with new ways of thinking about things. All right, so take some time to evaluate. What are you spending your time on? Try and match things up. Letting go, we've got all kinds of tools for you on that. Talk to our coaches about it, book some sessions, stuff that you're holding on to that's clogging up your schedule and getting in the way of you writing that book needs to move. This stuff has to get out of the way. You have, think about life, right? We have maybe 80 years if we're lucky, maybe 90 or 100 if you're super lucky, especially being healthy, of, of experiencing mortality, experiencing life. And then in that 80 or so years, how much of it do we get to do the things we really want? How much of it do we spend on the things that are most important to us? It's short, right? I'm about halfway around the block, I guess, 45. I've been, or, been around the block a couple of times or whatever. And I've got a ways to go still, but there's a constant gut check that starts happening as you get into the middle of your life where you're like, wait a minute, what am I doing? What am I spending my time on? This is literally one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel finally, is that it's time to get all these valuable tools that have made our lives better at the greater you and all the clients that we've served over the last couple decades. It's improved their lives. It's time to help you guys out there and help the masses. We want everyone on this planet to get access to these tools so that your lives can be better. So step five then is to adjust your life accordingly. It's probably time to really work on letting go of those things and making those three points on that triangle that now I have to build a visual and I'll get it up for you guys. That you, we want our, the things we want, the principles that we live by, and the things that we're actually doing to be in alignment. And then we will find ourselves feeling a lot more joy. In the realm of positive psychology, which I've been formally trained in for many years, it's one of my main areas in my world of self-help and, and helping others that I've focused on. There is plenty of data to back up the idea that alignment is part of creating happiness. If you look at Marty Seligman's PERMA model, when he's talking about having meaning and having engagement, in the PERMA model, those things need to be aligned. If you have this, your your sense of uh, things that you wanna be focusing your time on are out of alignment with what you really wanna be engaging or feeling meaning in, that's gonna create a discrepancy and mess with your happiness. If you get alignment across that whole PERMA model, maybe I'll do a video on Marty's PERMA model. He's an awesome guy. Dr. Seligman has done a lot for the world of positive psychology and just people generally those types of the research they've done have shown that alignment's key. If your actions and your intentions and your words and your desires are more aligned, which finding focus helps you do, then you are going to be a happier person because you're going to feel like that when you get up in the morning, you have a sense of purpose. You know why you're putting your socks on. You know why you're going to work. And you've got a sense of purpose and meaning driving that forward which then builds your engagement. Okay, so that's it for today. Let us know what you think about finding focus. Try this little five-step exercise out. Let us know if we can help you out with any one-on-ones. Our coaches are ready to help you out. They've been helping people for a long time. We'd like to help you too. So we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for your time. And we'll talk to you probably in the next couple of days. Thank you.